Welcome, and thanks for joining us today. You're listening to the Women's Broadcast Television Expert Spotlight Show. WBTN is the all-women's internet television station with content that's created by women and for women, and I'm your host, Shavon. Today joining us is our WBTVN expert, Tammy Johnston. And Tammy started working in the financial service industry in 1933. The last nine years of her career were spent working in regional offices for independent agents and as a brokerage manager for two different MGAs. Her focus was on training other agents and helping them to solve their, pro their problems for their clients. And after spending close to a decade as an employee, Tammy decided to venture into the sales world. Welcome, Tammy. Thank you very much for having me, Shay. Yeah, so exciting because I spent 12 years in the financial industry. So I totally understand, you know, the work that you have to do and the services that you really have to provide your clients so that you can keep them happy and making money. Because yes. Really <laughs> very important things. Very important things, just you know, looking there. But one of the things that I like that I read uh, about you is that you actually help to train a lot of other agents uh, to help their clients and to and to do things maybe not as traditional because both of us know when you're working, you know, for a financial industry. I have to honestly say to you, unless you go out on your own or you do something different, all everything is actually really fed to you and a lot of people don't realize that. Research, that doesn't mean independently that you don't do research on your own because you do, okay? Yes. But a lot of the research and everything is coming from the financial industry itself and certainly from whatever company it is that you're working uh, with. And so they have favorites that they want to, to sell and as an agent, um, you actually do those kinds of things and make those recommendations uh, to your client. So before we get into that, can you share with me what was your childhood like growing up and how did you end up in the financial industry in the first place? And was this a passion that you had all along? Well, that's actually a really interesting question because I actually grew up in a very rural community. Like the high school, junior, senior high school that I went to, um, we had 200 kids total. Like it was very, very small. Um, my dad owned his own trucking company. My mom ran the lab and x-ray department in the local hospital. So, and for my generation and still going on, you didn't talk about money or anything like that, but I was always fascinated with like business and money and, and I really liked that type of stuff. And then I ended up moving down to Calgary. And to be very honest, I was doing a temp job, trying to figure out, okay, what exactly do I want to be doing? And I ended up getting a job at Investors Group and in the front office. And my supervisor liked me so much that uh, she decided to hire me full time. And then she started encouraging me. She goes, Tammy, like, you're really smart. You're really good at this. Why don't you go get your mutual fund license and stuff like that? And that's where it started. I was 19 years old when I started in the industry. Yeah. And learning from the agents and how the different things worked and, and having to figure out ways to teach them and deal with all the stuff. And I've always been big on asking questions. And then I got recruited away to go run the independent office for the two agents. And I'm going, oh, I really like this. And then <laughs> and moved again and was running to what are called managing general agencies in Canada. They're the intermediaries between the agents and the company. So we're responsible for any problems that they have, any questions, doing the training, all of this stuff. So throughout my career, I was exposed to so many different things and had the opportunity to learn. And I'm just going, a lot of the stuff that I was seeing across my desk was really bothering me, mm. really bothering me. Things that I know weren't doing, being done properly because the agents just either didn't want to know or really didn't care. And they're going for the commission in a lot of the cases and there's nothing wrong with commission if it's earned like properly morally ethically and i'm going 
how is all this stuff happening? And I started doing the research and I'm going, it's because people know absolutely nothing about money and they're sitting down with someone. And if they're lucky, they're dealing with somebody who knows what it is that they're doing and cares about doing it properly. But in a lot of cases, it's just hit or miss. And I'm going, we need to start educating people. They need to start understanding how things actually work and how to ask the questions and go, okay, is this the right product or service for me based on what my situation is at this point in my life because things constantly change your situation is going to be very different than mine or my other clients for the different things that are going on in the world well you know i can certainly relate to that because like you're talking about you go and you get your series seven which allows you to to do most things as far as the financial industry is concerned mm -hmm. um and um uh, you know, and then like you mentioned, the, you know, uh, other licenses and things that you can get, from mutual funds and, and things that you can. The reasons that you get those licenses is so that on my side of it, I look at it like now this gives me the opportunity to really do some research and look into all of these companies and figure out why some companies are doing better than others. And when I talk about doing better than others, I don't mean on their financial side of it. I'm talking about for clients going mm -hmm. into those funds or looking at those possible investment opportunities so that they can make money. Because many of those funds and whatever are, you know, uh, for clients are set up for their kids to, to go to college and to yep. put money away for them. And people don't realize that. And they really don't really want to take uh, a lot of risk on those things because, you know, 10 years up the road, they're going to need that money so that they can go to school, so they can't afford, you know, to lose that. Yes. Um, and so there's so many things to take in, into, into consideration. I have to tell you, sitting here and talking to you about it, because I've been out of the financial industry now for the last, I forget how long, but it's, it's uh, about 10 years. And, but it reminds me about the reasons I went into it and certainly the reasons that I then, then shifted into health and wellness and doing some of the things that I'm currently doing now. But I think it's a great education on a personal basis because oh, I think, yeah, because um, I know how to, you know, to, to, to read uh, all the financials. And I know, I know what to look for when somebody, you know, when I'm looking at a mutual fund or I'm looking at individual, you know, uh, companies. And not a lot of people know, know how to do that. And they do so much rely upon their broker uh, and, uh, and the information that is given to them passed down through the company to make the decisions. And I think that during the time that I was in it, we actually started going, instead of from a commission standpoint, actually into, um, you know, paying up front X amount of dollars on a monthly basis from actually managing the, the portfolio. And sometimes that doesn't mean like, it's not like, boy, you're not managing it if you're not making a lot of trades a month. In fact, those people... I know you're laughing because you can you really can can uh, connect with me, but truly managing is exactly that, and it's not about having your client think you're doing a lot of things because uh, selling and, and buying is not what it. Most uh, investors that come into it are really looking for longer term investments that are you know with maybe even good dividends or reasons to you know to stay in. How of that? How of these stocks? Um, or even mutual funds performed in times when you know the market was at risk or came down and whatever. So it's not going up with the market just because the economy is going up. It's really taking a look at it from the other side of it and saying, how did this perform when the market was going down? And you know, is this really the right? Does this hold the right stocks in it, or all of the you know companies that are that are going to help my client with their goals? And I think that really, that's really when I think on a more individual basis that we started taking our clients much more serious, and it wasn't about just making a, a trade yeah. um, and 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 making commission. Like I like you said, there's nothing wrong in that at all as long as it's appropriate for the client and you're doing it for all the right reasons 
So you got into training and you came out of somewhat out of that and went into the sales end of it. Share that with me, Tammy. Well, you can pretty much get the products from anyone. It doesn't matter if they're licensed, as long as they're licensed, they can sell the products. And what I discovered that people really, really need is they need somebody to actually sit down with them and help them figure out their goals and what are their roadblocks and stuff. To be very honest, the largest part of my business is counseling, especially marriage counseling. <laughs> I go through an awful lot of Kleenex in my office because I'm going, if I can't have you in tears and three questions, I'm off my game. Because I, when I first started out in sales, I'd sit down with people and I'm going, doing the, the numbers and putting together a plan is actually really easy to do if you know what you're doing. And I've been doing it professionally on the high end for pretty much 10 years. But I'd find out that, okay, they fall off the plan in less than six months because I hadn't figured out what the real issues were. What were the difficulties between the spouses? What were they afraid of? What was going on in their life? So I changed things a little bit. And when I first sit down with clients, the first thing that I, the first appointment, I just spend talking to them and gathering information. And one of my favorite questions is why? And it's not because I think they're doing anything wrong, but it's figure out, well, what were you trying to accomplish when you made this decision? And, and is it still appropriate? And where do you want to be going? And where are the problems? And one of the biggest things that I do is helping them put together a budget that actually works. Everybody wants to come in and talk about like the retirement savings and the education, the stuff that makes the money, but I'm going, it is completely normal for me to sit down and help people go through their budget and find at least a minimum of $200 a month that they're bleeding that they don't even know about in different fees and, and things that they're paying for that they weren't aware of because people do not take the time. And it's not a lot of time, but they need to be much more conscious about their money. Like they work so hard to earn it, but then so much of it is going out the door and they're not aware of it at all. So helping them learn to ask the questions and figuring out, okay, what, what holes do you have? Like I do a lot of insurance and I do the investing and I do all of that. Do they have an estate plan? Like, do they have a will? Do they have an enduring power attorney, personal directives? Is everything put together? And then it's very, very simple to get them on board because they're excited. They're going, okay, I understand this now. And now I can get excited about actually achieving my goals instead of just throwing darts at a board in the dark. Yeah. And sometimes that's kind of what it feels like uh, too, especially when you get new clients and they start talking about what their portfolio looks like. And then you start asking, asking them the questions like you said, and they have no idea. Yeah, it's like, well, the my friend came and sold it to me or whatever, or my parents said I should go talk to this person. But And there might not be absolute, anything whatsoever wrong with the product, but they've never actually sat down with somebody to look at the whole picture. They're doing everything piecemeal, and they don't understand all the things that they're missing and the things that they're paying for that they don't need, and and they don't feel confident in their plan because – they don't understand it and how it all plays together. Right. And the truth of the matter is that they don't have a plan. You know, it's kind of like building a house mm -hmm. blueprint and it takes time to, to, to sit down, you know, with an architect and really put that blueprint together so that you know exactly what's going to get built and the reasons why. Financial planning is, is the very same thing. You're putting a blueprint together. You're deciding, you know, what percentage of your money goes into these different buckets. And these mm -hmm. bu buckets are, you know, maybe only 10 to 15% is going to be where you really want to take some, some risk. Maybe 40% of that is going to be, I really need some income coming in. Uh, so I'm really looking at, you know, companies that have, you know, uh, 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 you know, a dividend that's going to pay X amount. And then, you know, putting that together, it's that wheel and all of these different spokes that make up what that plan, you know, is going to be all of, all about. And I think that when you take the time to, uh, to consult, you know, it, consulting in the financial industry is looked at, uh, at a little bit different than when we talk about uh, people that consult for lifestyle purposes 
or um, health purposes or uh, transformation in their life. But the truth of the matter is it all comes together as the same because having a healthy portfolio and understanding exactly why you have put these percentages together it doesn't mean you can't change it because you always have the opportunity to do that. And I think that's probably one of the things that you share with your clients is, is saying, look, we're going to put this together. This is where our starting point is going to be. Yeah. But we have as your as your needs change and as your money, you know, your income either goes up or comes down, we can make the right adjustments to this that's going to benefit you. And I think that there's, I think there's a lack of that kind of communicating. I think, you know, it, years ago, most of all the financial services that were done were done over the telephone, and most people never met their broker in, per, in person. Yep. And, and that's just, you know, there's, an, there's a, um, a commercial that's out right now, and it's a father and a son. And the father's trying to give the son some advice. They're out to lunch together. And he says, oh, I think you're at a stage now. I should introduce you to my, to my broker. And the son says, oh, what does he charge? And he says, you know, I don't know. And he says, and then the son says to him, well, if you lose money, do you get your money back? And the father, and the father, and the father says, it doesn't work that way. And the son looks up and says, things are changing. Things are changing. I love that commercial. It's so perfect for what we're talking about because things are changing. They have changed and people do sit down and they get counseling. And they build that plan that, that, uh, uh, that helps them to understand the percentages and why they're doing it and why they're picking certain things. And do they have, you know, who's going to be holding the certificates even? Is it going to be kept at the, at the brokerage or are they going to take delivery of it? Um, all of those kinds of things. And uh, so I know that you care about all, all of your clients. So when you got into t the end of it, when you say into sales, what was, what was the most sales? Because I know you then started uh, doing insurance, as you mentioned. What were some of the other areas and what have you found to be the most uh, rewarding? The most it's actually rewarding. teaching. So right when, right when I started, I actually created a course called financial journeys and I, I still teach it not as much because I don't have the time to be taking on the same amount of new clients as I used to because my book is is pretty good but it, it, it's it's a one day very intensive class teaching you all the things you should have known coming out of high school but you didn't <laughs> and I've been I've been teaching that class for about 14 years now and I've taught it pretty much all over um, Western Canada. And I've had people fly in from like Toronto to take the class. And that's the one that I really, really like because seeing people with the light bulbs going on and they start getting excited and asking questions and they're going, okay, that's how that works. And going, okay, well, my wife or my husband's been nagging me that I need to be doing this, but I didn't get it until I came to class. <laughs> Right. Until they found you and they, and, and they came to, to hear what you had to say about, you know, having the, um, the wisdom and taking the time to learn things so that you can under, you know, so that you can understand them. And, and making it, making it fun and interesting because oh, yeah. there's been so many, a lot of the time I have, I have husbands, they're usually the ones that are dragged class and they, they start off with their arms crossed and the nasty look <laughs> on their face. And, and, I, and I start by cracking the joke and I said, yeah, I know you're here because your wife said that if you didn't come, you didn't get to see your naked anymore. And they start <laughs> laughing and stuff. And we start going into it. And like, I go like start with the boring stuff. Like, how do you actually set up a budget that works in reality? Not just looks pretty on paper for an hour and then you never look at it again, but a budget that actually works in reality. And how does credit work? Very few people understand any of that. And then... Yes. Like we go over all the basics, like how to make sure that you're, you've got the right coverage for your home and auto insurance and you're paying for what you need and what you want rather than just stuff that sounds good, but is totally completely worthless. Right. And then we go into investments and all the different insurances and it's not anything about companies or products. It's like, okay, here's how the stuff works. Here's the questions you need to be asked. Here's the situations that the different types of insurance work for and the investments and all of that. And they, they love it and they get excited because 
most people, they know that it's important, but most financial books or you go to a seminar and they are so boring, it's all you can do to fight to stay awake. Right, exactly. It is. Where if you can get them asking questions and, and laughing and enjoying themselves, because I tell a lot of bad jokes and, and because I've had like coming up on 24 years worth of experience, I have the stories. Like there's nothing I haven't come across in my career, either when I was working on the other side or in sales or even in my immediate family and stuff, the surprises you get to deal with. Oh, I didn't know that could almost kill my husband. Okay, we need to deal with that. Right, exactly. They understand it, it's not textbook, and then they get excited and they start talking about it because money is a more taboo subject than sex. Oh, oh, absolutely. You can ask me anything about sex, but don't ask me anything about my finances. I mean, yeah, they exactly. They don't want to talk about it. Wow. And that's really sad because finances affect absolutely everything. Like it is the main reason of, of marital strife. And it doesn't mean that there's not enough money, but because it's such an emotional subject for some people, it's security for other, it's all about fun and, and, what was your family life compared to your spouse's family life around the subject of money and the different things? And we never, we don't make the time to talk about it. And it's very hush hush and taboo until all crud hits the fan. And then we have to figure out how to deal with it or why aren't we achieving our goals or what's going on or why are you working all the time? And because we don't talk about it, we don't know how to talk about it and we just push it aside and push it aside. Why do you think that we do that? You know, one of the things I was going to, you know, mention to you, too, is the fact that in doing planning for uh, clients, it actually gets down to the to the nitty gritty as far as even your credit cards are concerned. And, you know, how much credit when you talk about credit, how much are you paying on those and how much could you save if you weren't doing that? And people just don't even realize what, how much money is marching out of that door every single month because you're paying the minimum on it. And, you know, it's easy to say, don't buy it if you can't afford it. But some people just aren't used to doing that. They're just used to paying the minimum on, on five credit cards, let alone one credit card. And they don't realize that what kind of jeopardy that can really put them into financially as they get older and trying to plan for other things, retirement, for kids' educations, and, um, and just even vacations are some things that they would like to do. That or even the people that that don't carry credit card debt but because they've they've always had good credit and good jobs and stuff like that and so they get offered a new credit card well i don't i don't owe anything on it so it's good they go to renew their mortgage well would you like a line of credit with that well if you don't have any money on it it's not going to cost you anything and you find out that they have like 200 250 thousand dollars of available credit and they don't understand um, number one, how that negatively affects their credit scores. And number two, and here's the big one, how much of a risk that is for identity theft. Yeah. Exactly. And, they, and they just, they don't understand how all of this stuff works or everything's joint. And they're going, okay, unfortunately, divorce is a big fact of life and how that negatively affects both sides, if anything should happen there. Or if something happens to one of them, I unfortunately, I have two clients last year that are my age, so mid 40s that had strokes last year. One is pretty much recovered, the other one is never going to recover, done. Right. So that's completely changed everything, or somebody dies. How do, you, how do you deal with that? Or you have one spouse that looks after everything. Well, ask my wife about that or ask my husband. Well, that's fine as long as everything's perfectly good. But if anything whatsoever happens to that situation, how are you going to handle that? Right. You don't know what's going on. Absolutely. And you're really getting into estate planning. And you, we always bring in an, an attorney uh, to work with us or somebody maybe that they, they know that they want to work with. Uh, um, with it. And, you know, in that estate planning many times is that assets are usually under one person's name, not under both. And there's a reason for all of that mm -hmm. and protection, because if something does happen to the other person, then you want to be able to, to secure that asset and have it safe. So lots of things that come into. Oh, completely. Yeah. Yeah, so much comes into just really taking 
I'm sitting down with the client and really asking all of the right questions and what they know, what they've prepared for, what they haven't. And where do we start and where is it that we want to end up, you know, taking them to? And that is going into the estate planning so that they have every single thing. You know, how many people, Tammy, pass away and don't even have a will, like you said, and they don't understand that what they're going to pay the government just because of that? And so, yeah. <laughs> and that, that, that's the easy one. If one that's person's easy. dead, yeah. there's at least set rules. If you have one person that's out of commission yeah. and you don't have that part put together, that's exactly. worse than dying without a will. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you had, what would you say as like one word or just, you know, a, a sentence to someone that, you know, is kind of sitting back and waiting. They know that they need to get financial um, expertise and uh, is, is they, they know that that's part of what they should be doing, but they're kind of like procrastinating on that and not moving forward. What would be your words of wisdom under that, those circumstances? If I had to put it down to one sentence, learn to ask questions. Learn to ask lots of questions. And when, when you're sitting down with an advisor or an expert and stuff like that, how do they respond to your questions? Because if they can't, if, if, if they talk down to you, they avoid the question, um, they're condescending or patronizing, don't work with them. If they can't explain things in plain, simple English so that you understand them, they don't know what they're talking about or they're trying to bamboozle you in one way or another. Right. It is not rocket science what we do. It's all very simple. And if somebody isn't willing to put in the time and the effort to educate you and make you feel comfortable when they're getting paid, how do you think that's gonna work when you have problems or anything like that? You need to find somebody and you need to ask questions and don't feel embarrassed or ashamed or anything like that. We build on our knowledge. I've been doing this professionally for coming up on 24 years. There's still lots I don't know because the game is constantly changing. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's exciting. There's, there's areas of expertise that I don't play that game. I will bring in the experts for that. So learn to ask the questions and be comfortable with the questions. Right. So what you're really saying is ask the questions and be ready to sit down and get some answers and and, yes. and, and, and make some choices, some uh, financial choices in your life that you've been putting off for some time. Yes. So how would someone get in touch with you, Tammy? Um, you can get in touch with me through my website, which is thefinancialguides.com. And you can contact me through that. And if you have any questions, I'd love to help you out. Well, I think that that's wonderful. I think everybody needs people like you in their life that really cares that's been in it for a long time and really has their heart in the right place. And, you know, we make money because we're, we're making the right choices for our, and helping our, our clients. And that's, that's the most important thing. It's the greatest thing you can, you can do. So I love what you're doing. And I also think that I wish there were better courses in, in colleges and in school that the kids can uh, come out of and learn something about finance. If they don't learn a lot, but they just learn to ask questions like you said, and, or look for somebody to give them help, the right kind of people, um, then I think that that's, that would be a great benefit uh, because I think too many people come out of school and even high school and whatever, even in high school, they should be learning about finances. They should be learning about saving. They should be learning why, all the answers behind that. So I love the why that you had said earlier. And I want to thank you uh, for being on our show today and, um, and for joining us at, at the WBTVN Expert Spotlight Show, uh, where, where, where we actually highlight some of the world's most successful women. And if you're interested in coming on and being uh, interviewed, please go to WBTVN.TV. Until the next time, we thank you for joining us today.